Listen, Russell Wilson comes in with a top five touchdown interception ratio from last year. And Mike Tomlin knows that he is a future Hall of Fame quarterback. So he has earned the right to be in pole position. But what it really does is it sets the tone for the locker room. All those guys in the locker room understand that if Mike Tomlin says something, it is the gospel. So if Russell Wilson is in pole position, they're riding with Russell Wilson to the wheels fall off. And it's really Justin Fields' job to go into Pittsburgh and prove to them that his future potential is worth investing in. The addition of Patrick Queen is huge because in the middle of that defense, you have Cole Holcomb on one side, you have Patrick Queen. And on the outside, you have Highsmith, you have Watt, you have Hayward and Ogan Joby in the middle. So you have defensively now front side that can compete with anybody. And I think what's kind of flown under the radar was the trade of Deontay Johnson. You get rid of Deontay, you bring in a Dante Jackson, the cornerback from the Carolina Panthers. I think it's pretty much safe to say the Pittsburgh Steelers are the biggest threat to the NFL next season. With the you know additions they just made to their team, I think they're easily the most improved team this offseason the commanders are up there the jets also added some good players but the steelers added a super bowl winning quarterback a veteran quarterback for dirt cheap also added a high potential quarterback who is just oozing with potential in justin fields you bring in two wide receivers in van jefferson quez Watkins. you add a scout back a guy who could do multiple different things include bringing back kickoffs in a guy like cordell patterson right you still have Najee and jalen warren you sign or hire a brand new offensive coordinator here in author smith as well this team is trending in the right direction in this video we're gonna break down everything they've done so far but more importantly discuss why they're setting up the most perfect draft strategy in the world and omar khan is about to go down as one of the best gms of all time because what he's about to pull off is maybe one of the most historic you know upgrades from one season to the next in this video i want to break down a couple of prospects that would be absolute perfect fits but also why omar khan is setting up this perfect strategy to make sure next season not only they're built to win but built for the future as well so let's get into that and it all began with the offense obviously looking at these numbers the steelers offense was one of the worst in the nfl 28th in points per game 25th in yards per game 25th in red zone scoring 27th in touchdowns per game the run offense wasn't too bad but then throwing the ball wise they weren't great at all and they needed to improve right away and not only did they get a veteran former Super Bowl champion quarterback in Russell Wilson but also a guy who they could pay nothing nothing to and come in here and be a day one starter now not only can Russell Wilson come in be a day one starter be a guy that can help this football team can compete and get to the next level right get over that hump but also, right, the underrated aspect of it is he's going to come in and be a day one mentor for a guy like Justin Fields who could be the future of this football team here in Pittsburgh once Russell Wilson is gone. Now, obviously, Mike Tomlin and Omar Khan have a ton of faith in Justin Fields. They think he is, quote unquote, oozing with potential. And that is true. I think Justin Fields could be a guy that takes that next jump up. A new change of scenery could change everything as well as a mentor. He's never had a good mentor. He's never had someone that can make him, you know, reach that next level of play. And not only do they have, you know, the right now quarterback, but they might even have the next quarterback, right? That Aaron Rodgers to the to the uh you know jordan love right if now that they have that they didn't even draft these guys they brought them in in free agency you got to give a big round of applause to omar khan for that alone but they didn't stop there now obviously with them trading deontay johnson letting go of Allen robinson they needed to add some more wide receiver depth that's where you start with van jefferson a very good route runner you got quez Watkins, who is a deep down the field threat insane speed i think it helped develop a guy like calvin austin who i do have high hopes for i do think calvin austin can take that next step up next season and kind of play in that marvin mims role like he played or uh, like marvin mims played in denver last year so i do like the wide receiver core but you obviously needed some more depth i even think calvin might be even be a starter but however they didn't stop there either right they also had cordell patterson 
who could play running back, who could play wide receiver, who could play, you know, in the slot on the outside. Um, you know, he, you play two running back sets in the backfield, Najee and Cordero or Jalen and Cordero. I mean, it makes them extremely versatile in the offense. But then you look at the new kickoff, right? The new kickoff is going to allow so many more kick returns and so many more opportunities for points on special teams. Patterson, one of the best kick returners in NFL history. I mean, wow, what a signing this is at a perfect time when the kickoff changes, right? And then defensively, you talk about a day one starter in Patrick Queen. You talk about a day one starter coming over from Miami and Deshaun Elliott, a guy who wants to win every single football game and is here to play for the culture of Pittsburgh. Dante Jackson, a day one starter, losing Pat Pete, right? You needed a day one starter to come over here, help develop Joey Porter, right? I think they might even come in and draft someone. We'll talk about the draft in a second. And then Dean Lowry, a guy who uses strength, power, um, you know, his elusiveness to absolutely disrupt the middle of the field. I think he could be huge in year one. But man, I think the most important thing is what they're about to do in the NFL draft. Now, before we break down their absolute dream scenario, how they're setting up the dream draft, right? Before we get into that, do me a big favor, hit the like button. If you guys want more Steelers videos, more updates for the Steelers for the rest of the offseason, including the draft, pre-draft, post-draft, mini camp, training camp, whatever, everything, right? Make sure you guys comment down below the number one. And also, if this video gets up to 400 likes, non-stop Steelers videos for the rest of the season, right? Also, subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. With that being said, let's start talking about what they're setting up to be the dream draft scenario or strategy. Now, kind of going throughout free agency, we've kind of found a couple of spots where this team needs to get better throughout the NFL draft, right? We know their position of needs, right? You could add a receiver. I don't think that's your main need. Your main needs on offense are center and tackle. I think you could add day one starters at number 20 because the class is quite frankly loaded. You could definitely get a day one starter. And I honestly think that is the way they need to go. Like I said, I think they could add a, a wide receiver, but I think the wide receiver class is also deep. I think they could add one in the second or third round. But defensively, you also need a defensive back. You know, I do love Dante Jackson and Joey Porter Jr. Also think Corey Trice Jr. could be a dog going into next year if he can get back healthy and stay healthy. But obviously, this league is built on potential and longevity. You need to continue to build up this DB room. That way, going into next season, we look at some of these rankings and they can start to improve, right? This number 11 in, in interception percentage, let's get that up a little bit, right? That number 21 in yards allowed per pass, let's get that up a little bit right i think there is areas to improve but even at the end of the day right we look at the defense and they were top 10 last year even though the offense was terrible right now think about if you have a good offense now with russell wilson and everything that they've done offensively Arthur smith i think the offense is going to be run a lot more smoothly so now you're talking about longer time of possession more time for your defense to, defense to rest and i think if you're a steelers fan you have to be so happy with how free agency you know came out or played out right Obviously, going into the draft, you don't want to be in a position where you need seven different things for day one starters. But they did that in free agency. You add a day one starter at linebacker, day one at free safety or strong safety, a day one at corner, right? Day one at quarterback, two wide receivers. Now they only have three big needs going into the draft, which they can easily fill, right? Now I really quickly want to break down a couple of prospects that I think would fit perfectly in the Steelers, you know, system. But before we get into that, comment down below. Give me a couple of names that you guys think the Steelers should absolutely prioritize going for in this year's NFL Draft. But let's bring up my first name. Now, the best fit, in my opinion, to start off this NFL Draft at number 20 would be Amarius Mims. I mean, when you look at his size, the capabilities, the talent, right? Amazing. One of the best offensive linemen I have seen in a long time. Now, clearly, the Steelers are going to need someone to play right tackle. Last season, they were looking or they were expecting Broderick Jones to come in and be the day one starting left tackle. He did settle at the right side of the formation. However, Khan said at the combine that, you know, Broderick Jones is going to move over to that left tackle spot, which opens up the right side. Who is going to play right tackle? It is a major need and I think this is a guy that could come in here be a day one starter be a day one contributor be a great starter right but also gives you insane potential for the future as well and I really do think if they get a Marius Mims they have turned this team around from top to bottom they have made it better going into this season from last year now if you don't want to go the right tackle 
right? You can also go with the center. I think Jackson Powers Johnson is a guy that, again, can step in, be a day one starter because, you know, they did cut Mason Cole, which obviously is a void. They do have Nate Herbig, who I think is, you know, a capable center, but obviously not your future. I do think that they will address the center position. I don't know if it'll be in the first round, but this is also a guy that will eventually be one of the best centers in the league, in my opinion. I think, again, you, you know, 6'3", from Oregon, one of the best offenses in football last season, is ranked probably the number two center in all of the combine. I think you can get him at 20, and I think he can really, you can really start to, you know, build that blueprint of the offensive line in where you want it to go. However, if you don't want to be, or if you want to be more flashy, I think there are other areas that they could really go out and make a splash in the first round. Now, if you wanted to go out there and be really flashy, right, in the first round, go out there and get a guy like Nate Wiggins. A day one starter can come in here, can really be a plus starter in a couple of seasons with development, but 6-1, right, you go down to his strengths from NFL.com, extremely long frame, should be able to support by adding good weight, something, you know, he'll need to do, right? Put on some size, and you're going to be one of the best corners on this team right away. He's got good speed good versatility in, in, in terms of a scheme, right? He's a playmaker, good instincts, and he, it's making him one of the most sought after corners in the league. However, if you do this, you still have to upgrade the offensive line at some point, right? You need a day one right tackle. You need maybe a center for the future, but then there's a wide receiver position, right? And I did want to say, let, let's just let's just pretend, right? They go out there and draft a guy, a corner in the first round. What can they do in the second? I have a plan for that as well. Now, if they do go out there and draft a corner in the first round, I think you could even easily come in the second and steal a guy like Roman Wilson, the 5'11", 185 pound receiver out of Michigan, right? You go down and look at some of his strengths, extremely explosive, is very competitive when it comes to, you know, 50-50 contested balls. This is a guy that can do everything for you, right? You have Calvin Austin, you have Quez Watkins, two guys who can burn down the field, right, and make big time plays with the football in their hands. However, getting the football in their hands is the issue. Roman Wilson not only adds the versatility as the catcher, the versatility as the speed threat, but someone who is just high potential, versatile, and loves the game of football. I think this could be insanely good if you want to go the route of just drafting a corner, a wide receiver, and then setting up the later rounds for O-line, right? We talked about left tackle being, or uh, right tackle being a need. Once Broderick Jones switches back over to left, right tackle becomes a main position of need, right? And then the center position as well, you release Mason Cole, I feel like Nate Herbig could be the start of the season if they wanted to wait another year and plug it up next year, they could do that. But I think they're setting up the perfect strategy, right? The one thing you want to do going into the NFL draft, right, is specifically make sure you don't have to bring in seven day one starters. And that is exactly what they did. Now, they can, they can focus on three to four positions of need in the entire NFL draft, which is massive. And I think they can add two, maybe even three day one starters, depending on what direction they go, right? You could add a day one corner. You can add a day one starting center, a day one starting tackle, a day one wide receiver, right? You can add any of these guys because I think this class is extremely deep in those categories. So I think they are setting up the most perfect strategy you could ever think of. And Omar Khan is doing such an amazing job, right? The most important thing in, is, in football is staying competitive, right? But but not only that, right? They're set up to compete in 2024, but also building a team that can have longevity, that can compete over a long period of time. Omar Khan is doing that with adding, adding Justin Fields, seeing if he can be a day one, well not day one, but a, a future guy, right? But also bringing in good talent and free agency, young talent as well, and Patrick Queen and, you know, Dante Jackson, Sean Elliott, not the youngest in the world, but now they have the NFL draft to bring in the young talent to, you know, make sure their future is good. I also want to give another big shout out to Corey Trice. I think if they don't want to add a DB, Corey Trice is a guy, if, he, if he's healthy, he's going to be massive for them. So do me a favor, guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, join the family if you're new, turn on post notifications, comment down below a few names that you think the Steelers should try to go out there and draft, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.